So hopefully everyone's in the right workshop right now. Uh, this is CHI during quarantine. I'm Ryan. And that's Olivia. <laughs> I'm Olivia. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for coming. Um, so starting off with an introduction, um, I'm Olivia. I go to Cal State Long Beach and I currently serve as their president and I'm also a fourth year and a graphic design major. Yes, and hello, my name is Ryan Tan. Um, I'm from Pasadena City College. I'm a fourth year and I'm studying psychology. And then to start off this workshop, um, this workshop is mostly gonna be talking about um, how like we think are like some ideas you could do um, to stay like help your club stay active during quarantine, um, whether it's service, leadership, or fellowship. Um, but we wanted to start off to um, by like asking you guys like what your like what is one thing your club is doing to stay active during quarantine. Um, so you guys could like probably like raise your hands um, in the if you go to participants, um, you will be able to raise hands. And if Ryan can help me call on people. Yes. Um, Brandon. Do you want us to introduce ourselves too? Yeah. <laughs> Just say um, your name and also like what school you go to. Hello everyone, my name is Brandon. I'm from UC Irvine. Uh, basically what we've been doing so far is we saw weekly socials, different kinds of things called Penguin, um, code names, just a bunch of different online games. And then we've been having a lot of like interclubbing as well, going to other people's meetings and holding our own meetings. And then we have like small DIY workshops for like how to make face masks for like to, you know, for the virus and also some workshops about like EDF and stuff like that. So yeah, that's how we've been active. Cool, thank you, thank you. Um, does anyone else wanna share what their clubs are doing during this time? Um, I know like a few club has like Discord servers. Um, and there's anyone from Sac State. Um, personally from Long Beach, we've been doing uh, weekly movie nights. Yeah, and I know that a lot of clubs have also been very like proactive and also just kind of like um, creative with their ideas. Um, I've seen a lot of different um, types of socials and also services. So yeah, Is, any last call for anyone would like to chat <laughs> before we move on to our ideas? I know there is some people from UCSD here. So, I mean, if they're still here, if one of the Justins wanted to talk. <laughs> oh yeah, hello. Hello. Um, so yeah, like our club's been doing a lot of uh, interclubbing during this time. Uh, we've been going to a bunch of different like meetings and different um, socials and different uh, service events that they've been hosting. Uh, we've been hosting some of our own as well. Um, and yeah, we look to continue to do that further um into the future um yeah uh i'm also the, the vpa from ccd uh, nice to meet you all thank you thank you and brandon did you want to talk again i wanted to add again <laughs> uh, yeah of course <laughs> get of me. Uh, also, <laughs> also i forgot like um some kiwanis meetings are still going on so we've been also trying to attend some kiwanis meetings as well i guess <laughs> thank you thank you and emily Hi, so I guess um, I'm Emily from PCC. I guess this isn't really a club thing, but again, along with like the thing with Brandon said, is something that we're doing is reaching out to um, graduating key clubbers and their RAs and getting their permission to come to our events. So that's something that like I've been hoping to facilitate in the future and it's been well received so far. Thank you, thank you for sharing. And if there's no more, um, we can move on. But thank you guys so much for um, also like giving us um, what your clubs are doing because like this workshop is very heavily 
based on um, what I've seen other clubs are doing and also giving other clubs some cool ideas that they can be doing in their own club. So the first one is service. Um, these are some ideas that we kind of like put together for some service opportunities that your clubs can be doing um, because I've noticed and um, that a lot of clubs have just been doing general meetings, which is perfectly fine. But um, you know, we are a service oriented club. So here are some cool ideas if you haven't thought of them before that it's easy, simple and easy to do. So some service opportunities that everyone can be doing is upcycling old t-shirts. One of our um, um, DSIs is gonna be serving the environment and this is a great way to serve the environment by upcycling old t-shirts. Um, I've seen a lot of clubs be doing dog toy making, tote bags, face masks and P2P dolls without um, stuffings. Um, I know that UC Irvine recently did um, a social um, of DIY face masks, as you can see in the graphic below. And these are really good ideas. Um, something I would highly recommend if you are doing these kind of upcycling old t-shirts, since um, it is hard to kind of say how much, how many hours to give for one, I guess, like one item of clothing or dog toy or tote bag that it's really highly recommended to be doing an event from this like maybe doing one hour or two hours of dog toy makings and tote bags and just how many that you make um will depend um as many as you make like if you make four or five if you do it within that one hour you get one hour service and yeah another cool idea is also card making um card making um you can make cards for people in hospitals hair healthcare workers, veterans, and hospital, hospitalized children, because these are all great ideas and also everyone needs a little more love and kindness in the world. Um, so I highly recommend these little cool tabletops and tabletops are reigning supreme right now. Yeah, um, so these are like some tabletop ideas we had. Um, next we'll be talking about like these online websites um, that I know some clubs have been doing. Personally, like Long Beach has both used both of these websites. Um, so for both of these websites, like for each like question you answer, answer co correctly, um, they donate the cash equivalent to um, a certain program for free rice. They donate the cash equivalent of 10 grains of rice to the road food program while bean, 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 um, their donations are based on like the number of beans collected and um, they're focused on donating to US food banks, natural disaster relief efforts and like other like smaller, um, smaller charities. Um, but for now, they're really focused on um, donating to the CDC Foundation to help the coronavirus pandemic. Um, and something to keep in mind when using both of these websites is to remember to remove um, ad block on both of the sites because they do earn like revenue through the ads um, as well as for free rice like um, basically it's kind of like quizzes so like they give you like questions and you answer um, from like a multiple choice so it's like really simple um, for free rice they have like different categories so there's like math like grammar um, I know like German Spanish um, geography um, and there's different like difficulty levels from easy medium to hard um, and you could also like be put into groups um, so like for Long Beach we were all put into like one group and then it was pretty cool in that you could see like everyone's ranking and like how many points each person in your group um, are at I guess um, and then some incentives like we do is Long Beach we did like um, we kind of had like a challenge round at the end and then whoever like won or got the most like you know grains of rice was able to dare the event chair while I know like Pasadena City College uh, whoever won their challenge um, was able to get like free boba postmated to them <laughs> um, and yeah and moving on to the next tenant which is leadership um, this is just to showcase some leadership opportunities that you can be doing. Um, of course, you are all in one right now, and the leadership opportunity is honestly a webinar. Webinars are a great, easy way to educate your clubs on um, club education, such as the DSI or District Service Initiative or DFI or the District Fundraising Initiative. This is a great time to just get to know what the um, club needs in terms of education. 
since DCON um, was unfortunately canceled, um, this is a great time to also just get to know um, and also train your members of what the district is like. Um, a really great idea to do with webinar to spice it up a little bit would probably be doing some member, member hosted webinars. And this is a great leadership opportunity for them because it teaches them what they want to do. Um, and also something that you can all be doing in terms of webinars is making a Google form for interest just to, just to gauge how, what they want to learn and also what can be learned. Um, it doesn't all have to be club education. You can do really fun ones like how to take advantage of um, $1,200. <laughs> Other things that you can be doing is just like how to take, um, make the most out of your membership and stuff like that. So it doesn't all have to be um, club education. You can be doing some dance workshops um, or just K-pop education. Um, another leadership opportunity that isn't just, <laughs> that is just around the corner is district committees or division leadership teams. Um, these ones are really fun and easy and with so much free time, um, it'll be so easy to just apply. Uh, something you can do is just applying for district committees or division council meeting, uh, division leadership teams, um, because you know, you have so many time and so much time um, just to fill out some applications. This is a great way to get involved because it's easy simple and it's just an application away. And also we'll be doing um, a Q&A at the very end. So um, we'll be looking at all the questions later on. Yeah, so definitely I personally feel like webinars are really like really important right now. I feel like um, like all our clubs really need like board training right now um, and the summer slash spring is like the best time to do all your training before you know the wave of like fall semester hits um so yeah definitely take advantage of that and then for other leadership opportunities um i know uci mentioned kiwanis take uh, like going to kiwanis move meetings um so like you could do like a leadership like a kiwanis takeover or um just like teaching kiwanians so like personally, like I went to like my Kiwanis meetings because um, Long Beach Kiwanis has it on Zoom. Um, and definitely a lot of Kiwanians need help on how to use Zoom. Um, so they asked me to make like a guide for them. Um, as well as you could have Kiwanians leading your meetings. Um, yeah, I guess for this, like we're also thinking about like you could like right now, it's like the perfect chance to even go to key club meetings. But I know with that, there's definitely like there's like some complications with that because you have to fill out an event request form and stuff because they're minor. So definitely um, right now is the time to like go to Kiwanis meetings, um, especially since it's Kiwanis Appreciation Month this month. Um, and then another thing you could do is alumni or senior spotlight. A lot of like seniors like with the whole COVID-19 um, is definitely like, I guess more sad for like the class of 2020 because you know they didn't really get to end off the year like they wanted so definitely I feel like senior spotlight is like super important right now um maybe having like a Q&A panel with your graduating seniors or like featuring them on your Instagram stories um Facebook TikTok um and then you could even do like an interview with them via Zoom or Instagram live um and this graphic down here is just um, our CNH Circle K alumni network. So it's a Facebook group. Um, if any of you guys are alumni like right now or you're planning on graduating, you guys could definitely join that. And moving on to the next one, we have fellowship. And fellowship is honestly like something we've been seeing a lot of clubs been doing. And it's great just seeing the variety and also just the contrast of each fellowship activity. So the first two ideas we have are COVID and chill. And this is like what a lot of clubs have been doing. Like Long Beach has been doing movies at the beach. Um, it's Netflix watch parties, but if you don't have Netflix or someone doesn't have Netflix, um, you can probably like torrent the movies online and watch them via Zoom um, and also Discord um, because this is something that I think will really bond a club together. Um, it's really fun just to watch movies. Um, and also <laughs> it's really fun to watch movies and you don't necessarily need to be um, in a club to do this, you can also be in just kind of like a group of friends or you're interested in Circle K and you want to watch, you know, like Tiger King or just uh, the platform or something, you can easily do it. It's a really easy and fun um, fellowship opportunity. Another one 
is um, TikTok competitions. Um, and you can post TikToks for family points if you do have families in your, um, in your club. Um, this is something that can be easily done in terms of just like, oh, this is a fun family competition. Um, something else you can do is do TikToks for challenges to get fellowship hours or do you take talk hours for people to donate to DFIs? Because, um, you know, everyone would love to see people doing TikToks or cringy TikToks or even great TikToks. Um, so it's really fun um, to just do this um, in terms of just getting more fellowship hours or donating to DFIs. Um, I know I'd love to see all of you in TikTok um, dance, and I definitely donate to the DFI for that. Wow, thank you, Ryan. Um, <laughs> anyways, um, some other fellowship opportunities are Club Penguin socials. Um, so you could host club meetings via Club Penguin. You can have socials of like sledding, pizza making, and snowball fights, um, and meet new people over Club Penguin. Um, and the graphic below is UC Davis actually did a Club Penguin social. I'm not sure if it was a meeting or not, but yeah um anyways um another thing you could do is interclubbing i know um because everything has moved online a pro of that is that a lot of clubs can do more interclubbings and you know we can we have more time to actually go to each other's meetings because we don't have to um actually like drive there um so definitely like you could collaborate with other schools on your events maybe hold like a joint meeting um speed dating game nights or even like tournaments um and like you know with more people it's more fun um and then our example below is ucsd they actually did like a karaoke night um and this is like very last minute but they invited like um uc irvine and uc and cal state long beach and uc riverside um and i think they actually had like a really good turnout um but yeah and some other fellowship opportunities um as all have said there's game nights and some free online games would probably be Scribble IO, Cards Against Humanity, Codenames, and some paid games would be Jackbox. Um, this is a really great investment during this time as well because everyone wants to play games. So why not invest a little bit on Jackbox to get your club into some of these fun games? Um, some really good ideas for game nights as well is that you can probably go to Zoom. And um, on Zoom, we can put people in breakout rooms. Um, so you can probably do breakout rooms um, of people doing card games or just stuff like that. Um, this is just a way to show that you don't always have to, um, that even during COVID-19, we can also just be very active. Um, these, gum these games are also really fun. I played probably all of them, so I highly recommend it. Um, some other great opportunities would probably be online tournaments. And online tournaments are the free online games of League of Legends. Uh, Tetris, Overwatch, and some paid games would be Super Smash Bros and also Mario Karts. Um, and these ones are really fun. I think that um, I know UCI has an esports <laughs> e team, and I think that's a really fun idea. Well, I mean, it's for campus, but um, it, it's a really cool idea to adopt as well because tournaments are always cool to see. Um, you can do like, um, you can do a lot tournaments like whoever wins best two out of three and stuff like that and at the end they can probably get some prizes or just kind of like um recognition at your next general meeting um some other fellowship opportunities that i highly recommend is you can get creative with it like you can probably have a cooking night um where everyone is on zoom and when they have a cooking social you can probably just um have the same recipe and everyone follows that recipe for a healthy fun dinner um, with everyone. So I think it's pretty fun to do a cooking social, um, teach everyone how to make a peanut butter jelly sandwich, just something along those lines. So yeah. Okay, so now we're moving on to involvement and recruitment. Um, and I know like a lot of like people's worries are probably like um, doing service online. How do we get people to, you know, be involved and actually do service? Um, and this goes into like what I said before um, with Cal State Long Beach and PCC, um, having like incentives um, is something you could do. Um, so like we did DARES, um, PCC, they post, they gave whatever, whoever won, um, they gave them boba, um, or <laughs> you could do face masks. Um, but yeah, providing some sort of incentives or maybe like if you're doing like a tabletop service um, 
and people do not necessarily like have the access to certain items i feel like maybe as a club if you have the funds you could help um maybe fund the member um and then definitely publicizing early in advance um now that everything's online every most people are probably like on their phones so definitely making use of social media posting on facebook instagram TikTok, um and yeah adding adding variety to your events so you're not just doing the same thing every week but also i know that with the whole like covid 19 going on um everything's pretty limited right now so it also does make sense if you know, you only have like the same service events. Um, but yeah, just like, I guess being more aware of that. Um, and then recruitment, I know that um, we're still like, you know, unsure about, you know, fall semester, um, being online and stuff like that. Um, we felt like you could focus um, your recruitment to transfer students because there's a lot of like transfers from like community colleges coming to um, UCs or you know Cal States um, and then um, asking the lieutenant governors or he wants family chairs to help outreach to key clubs um, we haven't appointed a district like KFAM chair yet but definitely like if like I know right now some people don't necessarily have Kiwanis family chairs or um, even lieutenant governors um, but definitely it'll be out soon um, and then like you could for sure like use them as a resource um, and then finally collaborating with your student government to see like you know what resources they have for um, your club um, I know something that was mentioned was that um, you know other like sororities or fraternities um, and even like I guess like AFIO so like other like service clubs they like require service certain like service hours so I think you could check to see like you know what they're doing or even like recruit them into Circle K um, but yeah you have anything to add to this Brian? Yeah, um, I think that um, recruitment is a really um, big concern for a lot of clubs right now. Um, so I think that we're shifting shifting from a focus of just kind of like new members or new freshman college people <laughs> going into college to more of a shift to transfers um, or also people who who's already in um, your college and know kind of about um, Circle K. So I think a really good recruitment strategy would probably be focusing on transfer students since um, you get thousands of transfer students every single year. I'm currently transferring. So yeah, I think that it's a really great demographic to hit. Um, and also just with involvement, um, I know as a general member, um, there is a lot of ways to get involved within your own club. Um, and as we talked about earlier, if your club personally doesn't have the same, um, I guess the same, like resources, um, I highly recommend them to reach out to district officers or just kind of like other presidents within their divisions to see how they can enter club because a really great way to meet other people from different clubs is starting off within your own division. Um, so I think that's a really great way to also get involved, um, seeing what other clubs are doing and also getting involved that way. Um, as a general member, you have a really great opportunity um, this year to get involved by asking your club officers um, if you can probably host workshops, um, if you can work, host a webinar, or just if you can do something in your own club, like what you can do to help, um, just so, you know, little help helps everyone. Yeah, and I think also like, this is all like, this is like a new change to like everyone. So we're all like adapting. So definitely if you're a general member and you have like ideas, definitely reach out to your officers and you never know if like, you know, it might help them in the long run. Yeah. And some resources that we have are, the first one is these resources um, for publicity. Everyone loves publicity during this time. And publicity is the first step to kind of having um, a great event. And let's say you don't have a publicity chair, PR chair, graphic chair, webmaster, tech chair, whatever they call it in your own club. Um, you can also ask CNM, or the Communications and Marketing um, Committee for graphics. Um, I know that they will get appointed very shortly, but um, your own division may be having their own graphic chair very 
very shortly as well. Um, but if you don't um, really have those resources in your division or district at the moment, you can also ask Canva, or you can make one on Canva. Canva has a really, like a lot of different templates. It's free, it's easy to use. And these are great, um, just kind of great ways to make graphics that look professional and easy to use. This is not sponsored by Canva, but I highly recommend using them. Um, another resource is sign-in sheets. Um, I will be sending out like a little um, Google form um, that is like a sign-in sheet for events very shortly. But if you want one, um, since you are having a club, um, if you're a club that doesn't necessarily have a Google form for sign-ins, please reach out to me and I can um, definitely um, give one to you as soon as possible. Um, and these are just two things that every club should be needing um, for Google Forms and also Google Sheets for attendance. Um, and also finally, uh, make sure you're doing the proper tags um, because I um, want you all to know that you're tagging all your events properly um, and correctly. So making sure that all your workshops, since they are online, that they'll be counting as webinars, that if you're going to a club meeting and it's an inner club, you're tagging that correctly and sending it to your respective officer because you want to get recognized for your achievements of going to these many clubs. So making sure that you're always tagging your inner club tags and also making sure that you're tagging all your webinars, workshops, and just being on top of that. Yeah, yeah do your serfs. <laughs> 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 district secretary. Um, so going off of publicity, I know like the Adobe Creative Cloud also has free Adobe until like May 31st. So you guys definitely could take advantage of that. Um, there's also a lot of like different resources right now that I also um, think everyone can take advantage of. Um, and then moving on, Shout out to UCSD, because we took this from you guys. Um, basically, <laughs> this is um, some resources, like they basically like created a database um, of quarantine resources for their members, which I think is super cool. Um, basically, they have like internship opportunities, um, like books you could read, um, volunteer opportunities, um, academics, which I think is, um, super helpful um and i think this is something that you know all clubs can like probably learn from them and maybe um we could like ask them to like you know share this with everyone um but yeah and um some other resources that we um found throughout the whole district is that there is um cal state long beach is doing weekly kickbacks where they enter club within um with with another club so their club can learn about a different club um this week they're doing UNLV so it's a really great opportunity to enter club and also get to know other people from throughout the district um, another um, thing people are doing is they're doing art auctions and art auctions is really cool for a fundraiser because I love to buy art and I want to hang them up in my own house so this is a great way to raise money for your DFIs um, another thing, um, as you can see in Cal Poly Slow, um, right in the middle, they um, are going to be doing a service-a-thon. Um, and this is just a really great opportunity to also do your service hours um, through a marathon of service or just making sure that they are um, still keeping on track with service. And there's also UCSD, um, their Zoom Rush Week. And this is really interesting and really fun to do. Um, since, you know, during Rush, we do want to recruit and retain as many members as possible. So by doing um, everything on Zoom, like they did um, GM number one after the social, they have a mukbang, um, they have game night, speed dating, and movie night. This is a great way to get your members involved um, quickly. And finally, um, UNLV is doing a quarantine fundraising challenge. And as you can see, there is multiple different layers that they can um, reach to kind of be doing different, um, I guess, different things, different dares. <laughs> so it's really cool um, to raise money for your DFIs. And this is just a way to show that other clubs, what other clubs are doing. So you can probably get inspiration from it. So it's kind of like a Pinterest inspiration board. So um, if you want some ideas, hopefully you can get some from this. Um, and they're really simple, easy, and also remote. So now we would like to open the floor to questions. Feel free to raise your hand and or type it in the chat if you have any questions um, and I will call on you guys.
so yeah, any questions about CTI during quarantine? I know this is jam packed um, with different information. Um, Justin, Luck, Luke? Um, what would you say is the best way to try to get more people to come out besides just marketing? Olive, do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? Um, you can go first. <laughs> okay. Um, so I, I think like involvement um, or just kind of like more people to come. Um, besides marketing, I think a really great way to do it would probably be um, just having it in collaboration with other events. Like if you're having a general meeting, um, probably having it before or after. Um, since you already have people there. Um, so I think that's a good way to reach out to different, a different demographic of people going um, to your general meetings um, or making sure everyone goes to your general meetings. Um, and also just another recommendation would probably be, um, hmm, let me think, in terms of involvement um, and just having a different demographic. Uh, dem demographic. Um, something I've learned that really helps is probably just like, personally reaching out to people um, because I think that's a really great way to keep people accountable, but also just kind of making sure that they come out. Um, Olive, do you have anything to say? Um, yeah, I definitely agree with Ryan um, because right now is like, you know, a really like awkward time, I would say. Um, so definitely I feel like social media is like the only way to go. Um, because usually like for recruitment, it would be like, you know, word of mouth, right? Um, and personally out reaching to someone, I feel like right now, the only like really like resources we have is through um, social media marketing, as well as um, what Ryan was saying, definitely like personally reaching out to others. Um, there, I know there's like, we could like, no, you could do like interclubbing a lot, but like something like I personally was worried about for my own club was I felt that um, we were interclubbing a little too much um, and kind of straying away from our own club members. So I think that's something to also think about as you're, um, you know, interclubbing like a lot because I know like right now is a time where everyone's like super excited about interclubbing. Um, but definitely like I think more like being aware of your own club members and making sure that, um, you know, no one seems like too left out from like the whole like new like um, I guess adaption, um, if that's a word, <laughs> um, but yeah. yeah. Thank you for the question. Um, I'll go to Steve, then I'll answer Audrey's question. Oh, okay. So Steve's question was regarding webinars. Could also be for um, any random topics we want to show others, like for example, contrasting Japanese school life um, for what's that depicted in anime. Um, I would say, yeah, it can. Uh, it really depends on your club because I think at the end of the day, um, you should run it by your member development education chair or just something that um, you can or some sort of officer just to make sure that it is appropriate and it's able to. Um, able to be shown to your club. Yeah. Well, I mean, I didn't really hear that question. I kind of missed it, um, but I heard anime. <laughs> um, and I would say like, cause there are definitely like parts of anime that I know could be like less CGI appropriate. So definitely making sure um, that you talk to your president um, and then also like having someone look over your slides. Um, yeah. If you think that members would go out to this workshop, then definitely I feel like you could do it. Yes, I agree. And um, thank you for the question. Um, Audrey asks, um, how do you recommend we promote participation in our Zoom calls, like answering icebreakers, et cetera? Um, so something I would recommend to promote participation in Zoom calls um, would probably be like, Okay, well, first, I think be, being okay with silence and or just kind of like being okay with a loud room or vice versa, um, just because um, 
in in terms of Zoom, like I think it's kind of uniform to kind of be muted. But I think a really good way to kind of increase participation is maybe trying out um, one meeting where everyone's non muted and seeing how that works out. Um, but also just engaging with the members in terms of um, um, for icebreakers, I think some really cool icebreakers would be something that you guys do together or just having breakout rooms. I think breakout rooms are a really great way to have icebreakers um, since you're put into groups of three to four to five. Um, and this is a really great way for people to get to know each other, but also engage in a more safe, safe space um, where they don't have to go out and talk to the whole room if they're not comfortable with that. Yeah, I think like something like that I always do is definitely like, um, you know, if no one has anything to say, like provide what you think. Um, and maybe it could start something. Um, I know like, I really liked how like UCR at their meeting, they did like a popcorn. So you kind of like, you know, you have members call on another member. Um, but definitely with that, like, you know, some members get scared, like, cause you know, you don't know if they're gonna call on you or not. Um, but I think also like, as like, um, I guess, um, the person like leading the whole like workshop or event, um, definitely like, you know, just calling on members that you know would be more extroverted and like, you know, more likely to talk and asking them what their opinions are. Um, but definitely like Ryan said, like be fine if, you know, no one talks, um, cause you can't force people <laughs> and they might not never, they might never come back if you're like, <laughs> Hey, you, what do you think? <laughs> um, yeah, and um, Alana asked, what do we even talk about in general meetings um, if nothing's going on? Want to go first, Ollie? <laughs> um, okay. Um, so actually, like, I also was, like, pretty worried about this. Um, making my meetings online i ended up like calling it a meeting plus like you know kickback um because i felt like it would be more like laid back as well as there's not much to talk about at meetings um but i think it's totally fine if there's nothing to, like not much to talk about meetings like your meetings could be like you know 20 minutes um and you guys could just be hanging out after um my first meeting um it was just we just had like a short meeting and then we talked about club updates, divisional updates, and then district updates. And then right after the meeting, we had like a game night. Um, so like trying to incorporate like something fun after, um, cause personally I think that general meetings are when we get the most like member attendance. Um, so I know like next week my meetings, my club is gonna have like um, a COVID-19 <laughs> workshop. Um, so like staying active during, COVID-19. So basically, not like this one, but it's more like exercising from home, um, things to get, keep you busy during COVID-19. Um, so like, I feel like you can incorporate like your member hosted like webinars after, um, as well as, yeah, I think there might not be much going on in your club, but there's still like a lot going on in the vision and the district right now. Um, so definitely like using that to your advantage and talking about it at your general meetings. <laughs> Ryan? Um, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. I think like that's a lot of um, ways to like um, incorporate um, or just kind of like talk about something. Um, some things I also, I would recommend is probably just um, spotlighting members or alumni or um, just like seniors or Kwanians because I think that um, it's a great opportunity right now to kind of like, um, a great opportunity to get to know uh, your other SLPs or just kind of like people who've been in your club for a while um, or just kind of like spotlighting something um, because I know that during this um, time a lot of people don't necessarily um, just kind of want to talk to people <laughs> so I think like it's a good opportunity for them to, um, to a good opportunity to use your general meeting for more so like a social hour or just talking to people because I know that um, I'm tired of just talking to my mom and my aunt every single day so I think it's really good to talk to like other people on a zoom or getting to know other people from different um, districts so I think like that's a really good safe space that um, Circle K has given us in terms of uh, general meetings and stuff like that yeah I think yeah. my club also we 
started incorporating like TikToks into our meetings just to make it a little more like fun, I guess, engaging because, you know, people like watching videos. So having like a small video at like each meeting like definitely helps like liven up the meeting, I would say. Um, like I know everyone like recently got appointed so you could do like a board intro video. Um, yeah. Um, and then um, someone asked, how do you promote and establish a better communication between board members through Zoom or any online platform? Hmm. So personally, I had a fairly easy time like adjusting um, because as a past like district committee chair, like all of my meetings were online. Um, so like district committees, everyone's from, you know, all over the district. Um, so like definitely like the only way that we could, you know, really like meet up or like communicate with each other was through um, social media. Um, so what our club does is, you know, we have meetings on Zoom. Um, and I guess to make them more, hmm, I want to say engaged. Okay, I take that back. Um, but we do, we use Slack, Zoom, and Trello. Um, I think Slack is really helpful in like making sure that um, all the professional like work is like, you know, on one platform while, you know, you're using Facebook Messenger for more like laid back communication and you know just like casual communication um we definitely like incorporate we definitely like use the raise hand feature a lot in our meetings um just so that members don't like you know talk over each other um definitely with my meetings i'm trying to make it more discussion based so that um i could hear more of like my board officer's thoughts because i feel like there's always something to discuss like there's always something to improve about like, you know, CKI or um, the board. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> I think I'll have nailed it, uh, like set everything on point. Um, and <laughs> Alan asked, how do you encourage board members to do their work and participate in board meetings? Alan? Was that my board officer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, during uh, the position, so I think like having a service, um, like having a service um, agreement or just kind of a contract um, for what they have to follow for the year is a good <laughs> incentive because I mean they signed up for a position for a reason um, or got elected into the position for a reason so I think they should know what they're getting themselves into um, so I think like yeah I think I don't know that's how it, <laughs> I would encourage my board members yeah and this is probably like off topic but like something like my club does but I don't know because Alan's asking the question um, so <laughs> I make all of my uh, board officers, they first have like predecessor successor meetings and then I have them create timelines for themselves. Um, and then <laughs> after that, like it's like a first draft and I feel like it really helps like plan out the term um, and ensure that, you know, my board officers are not burning out. And then I would, um, I guess me and my VPA um, would then go like revise it um, and then give them feedback. Um, but that hasn't happened yet because um, timelines aren't due yet. Um, but definitely um, also on Slack, um, me and my VPA have created like private channels for each position just so that um, I guess the communication is like streamlined because as like a fundraising chair, I definitely had problems with, um, you know, messaging my treasurer, VPA and president and like, you know, repeating the same thing over and over again. So having like a Slack channel where everyone's, you know, in the same channel um, and like, you know, you can communicate with the A board officer like through a more streamlined communication like helps. Um, and I think it's also up to the president to be more, the president and VPA to be more like proactive with their board officers, um, creating like a master timeline from everyone's timeline, as well as um, 
checking in. Um, yeah. Yeah, and um, Brandon, did you have a question? Well, yeah, I guess for me, um, what I've noticed in the past few weeks is my board members, it's kind of like the complete opposite of the last question, where I feel like my board members are actually super engaged with everything they were doing and just being super active, but it's been kind of hard for me to get to my general members to engage with all the stuff they were doing. So I don't know if you had any tips about that. Hi, right, thank you, Alan. <laughs> um, I think for general members, um, the only way like I feel like my club is doing it is, you know, through our family chats that we already have established. Um, so like that's how we're reaching out to our general members to go out to things as well as we recently started like a club discord and i know that a lot of our general members have been going on discord and you know just like joining a voice chat and like chatting with each other or just like listening to music um i feel like for me also like that's the way we're getting general members to come out um but ryan do you have anything um I mean, kind of like a general member at PCC, something they've been doing to make sure I go out to things is like they've been personally messaging me. Um, so, kind of hard I, myself, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I understand. <laughs> so I got, got a little too many members. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I mean, huh, I'm thinking, let me think here. That's seconds. why I feel like my club is always an anomaly, so it's <laughs> hard to give it away. Yeah. I like I like Olive's idea in terms of like the families because I know that families yeah. are a really big um, culture in terms of VCI. So I think like making sure that families and also mentor, like utilizing mentors, mentees, um, like yeah. making them go out to things um, is a really good way to get more general members in a different demographic to go to things. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I also think like having, I'm not sure, I'm pretty sure um, UCI is doing like um, weekly emails or biweekly emails. Because I think that's another good way to spread the word out. Because that's how I know of PCC's events and stuff like that um, through the weekly emails um, and also posting on the Facebook page. Um, so those are just some things that like I have been as a general member, like how I've been kind of going out to things. Okay, cool. Thank you. But yeah. Any other last-minute questions? If not, um, we'll go on to the last slide, which is contact us. <laughs> if you have any questions that um, you felt nervous or kind of shy to ask us right now, um, or just kind of like comments or um, criticism, stuff like that, feedback, let us know. That is our emails right there. Um, and also, Erica has posted the sign in link through the chat. So, yeah. Thank you for coming out. Thank you, guys. Um, thank, thank you, and you. have a great night. Hopefully, it helps. <laughs> I'm still <laughs> Bye.